All right, we are here with Connor Hall of History Channel's Rust Valley Restorers. Pretty cool that we're here with you today. Well, How do you, you feel to be at Monorama? You know, it's it's one of those big shows that I normally wouldn't have a chance to come to because I'm on the far end of the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eBay approached us and they really wanted us to come here. They really wanted us to bring our cars and show the world. And, you know, I'm super glad that they got us here. And it's, it's, really, it's a nice show. There's a lot of oh, people Oh my here. God, right? Like we were just saying that. I mean, I come on the weekend usually to Motorama. This is my third year coming here, but this, today, with all the students, it's just incredible to see yes. that with all of the young people that are interested. Because a lot of people say cart culture is dead, blah, blah, blah. No. No. Here it's alive and well. It is. And it's the young generation coming up that's keeping it alive so, and well. Okay. I'm going to dive right into it. We want to talk about, you know, your life growing up with Mike as your father, yep. working on the show, yep. as a, and, and your enthusiasm with cars and everything. Yep. So let me know. I know that Mike used to run a rock scaling business. Yeah, I run it now. Yeah. Oh, you run it now. Yep. Look at that. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you first start working with your dad with the rock scaling business? So as far as rock scaling, pretty much since I've been like 15 years old, uh, like summer breaks, I'd go work for two months mm -hmm. during the summer and then, you know, go back to school. Grade, grade 11, grade 12, I did that. And then as soon as I graduated, it's been pretty much full time hanging off ropes, blowing stuff up. Really. <laughs> I love that. How much were you involved with your dad's collection of cars growing up? Well, it's, you know, it's, you're the kid that grew up with a junkyard in the backyard, right? <laughs> so I'd spend, you know, I'd be home. I'd, what I do, I'd go sit out in a 65 Mustang and pretend to drive. Or my, par <laughs> my parents would leave and I'd, you know, hot wire one of the El Caminos and do oh my God. in the horse pasture. Right? You know, that How kind of thing. How much trouble? Did you get grounded oh, a couple lots. times? Oh, yeah. I got in trouble all the time. All the time. But, That's so good. you know, what do you do when you grow up with, you know, back then I think we were at about 200 cars when I was a kid. Oh, just 200. Yeah, just 200, <laughs> right? But, but what do you do when you're a kid and you get to grow up with that, right? Exactly. It was you're a cool gonna... place. All the friends would come over. We'd play in the cars. Your own do playground. Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about the show. When it came around, uh, what were your first thoughts? when? Because I know that I spoke to your dad a couple months ago, yeah. and he said that originally it was going to be a show about rock scaling. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of red tape here in Canada. Some yeah. things happened, and then yeah. they found out they had 400 cars in the backyard. Yeah. So how did that work out? What was your? How did you get involved with the TV show? So it, it was actually just kind of like freak luck of the draw. Mm -hmm. So they tried to do the show on scaling four or five years, demo reels, pilots, oh all the whole time. Oh, yeah, long time. Never worked out, never worked out. My dad listed the property with the cars for sale because oh, really? he decided he wanted to downsize. And it went viral. Motor Trend did an article on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, um, anyways, a, a bunch of internet articles that were kind of went viral with it. And Matt, being the producer of High, off, uh, the, off High With Your Hell, Hell yeah. which we'd originally done a mm -hmm. bit on, and then it just kind of rolled into the rock scaling thing. And then after that thing went viral with the lot being listed, Matt showed up one day and said, you never told us you had 300 old cars. Like, what are you doing Mike, with it, right? right? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, it was just, you know, it was dad's hobby and whatever. Just and the air? Yeah, just it. <laughs> and it just kind of picked up from there. And one day it was, you know, hey, let's come out, let's film a sizzle reel about you trying to sell your property and the cars and everything and see what happens. And that was... Then a sizzle reel turned into yeah. four seasons and a massive fan base. Right, <laughs> yeah, and that was the start of the end of, the, of it all. And That's... now we're, you know, yeah, four seasons in, fifth season's ready to air whenever they get to it. And... Yeah, I've heard a little bit over the bills that are being prepared for that, what you guys did for the fifth season. And, yeah. oh, guys. Yeah, oh, there's some good ones. There's some there's really some good, good ones. ones. Yeah. You and Mike definitely have different preferences when it comes to classics. Yes. What do you define as a classic to you, and what's your favorite? Well, it's... They're, they're still all classics, yes. right? Whether it's a... Uh, stock 68 big block Chevelle or a totally custom 66 like mine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, they're all classics. Avery, oh, hold on. Avery! Give us a minute. We're doing an on camera interview here. Do a wave, do a wave, do a wave. Yeah, so, anyways, so they're all classics to me, right? It's just, I'm more, I like to drive my car, right? I want to be able to abuse it and it handle good and drive good and everything and yeah. like sure don't get me wrong big blocks with carburetors and four gears they're fun to drive they're fun to play Absolutely. with but that's when it comes to your car right when it comes yeah. to my car i want it to be something that i can cruise down the highway at 20 miles with a gallon and yeah. i want to be able to out handle a new camaro with it and that exactly. kind of thing right so it's like as far as my favorite car it's it's got to be mine and which is why i picked this one to build right yeah. i like full frame cars i like chevys i like the fact that it's 
a solid car. I'm not a big fan of unibodies, yeah. right? Like all the Mopars and the Novas and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm a Mopar gal myself. So. I, don't, I don't mind Mopars. It's just I don't like the unibody aspect. Of no, it, right? absolutely. It's definitely it's hard. It's different to work with. It's it different is. when you have a more experience with a certain vehicle. You're always yeah. going to do that. You so, want to do it to the best. Yeah, and always. they handle power. Like don't get me wrong, you can handle power out of a Mopar, but now you're doing subframe connectors mm -hmm. and you're doing this and you're doing. And Mopars are so finicky. It's like, oh, this motor mount only works with this one year yeah. of this A body and nothing else, exactly. right? So, and how are you going to find the track it down? Things like right. that. Today. And like a Chevy. Even my dad's 68, he just drove it across the country. What happens if something Reliable. breaks? Any junkyard anywhere is gonna have, exactly. you know, big block Chevy parts or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, turn signals and random stuff that is the same for 30 That you years. need, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your favorite build that you guys have done on the show? <laughs> it's a hard one right there. One of them, one of my favorite ones was actually the red 66 Mustang we did. Ooh, yeah. Because that car was actually supposed to be mine. I my remember. dad my dad gave me that car as a grad present and then took it away from me. And the whole thing is we we wanted to do that car for years and years and years and it just always ended up on the back burner. And it turned out great. It was a five liter Stunning. car, five speed, it handled good and it was it was a fun little car to drive. And mm -hmm. that was that's one of my favorite builds. One of my favorite builds that you guys did was the fire truck. The the old fire truck yeah. that you did. I can't remember, it's slipping yeah. my mind right the now, but the La France. La France. Oh, yeah. it was so cool. Yeah. I love that one. That was That's, awesome. It's different. Totally Definitely different. Definitely different. And all yeah. the trouble that you guys went to to try and find everything for it. Oh. It was, you ended up buying another, uh, another one, right? Oh, yeah. you a whole second two. fire <laughs> truck. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to work like that's one of those things. Yeah. Where do you find parts? Where are you going to find the parts for that, right? Yeah, you don't it's call crazy. up Lorco and say, "Hey, I need a LaFont's yeah. headlight." Yeah, I don't think Lorco's right? going to be able to uh, oblige with that one. <laughs> actually, eBay might. eBay actually had some stuff that we bought for that fire truck. I no think, way, really? Yeah, yeah because there, there's actually a, quite a big following of people that like old yeah. firefighters and stuff. A lot of old fire stations have them as their like their parade vehicles. Is all those old LaFont's fire trucks? And we, I think, we found the bell on eBay. Yeah. And yeah, the bell, and there was a couple other things that we that's the only place we could find them everywhere oh else. Gosh. That was it. It's, it's hilarious, it's so funny. It just if you haven't watched the Rust Valley Restorers, that is a good story to just show you. They will do anything to make a dream come true you have for to. their belt. Yeah, you have to. So, a lot of people in the you know, the auto body industry, which we deal with the magazine, yep. skills, skilled trade shortage. Yes. Big thing. There's oh, a lot of cute. people that just say that they can't find any staff around across the country. What would you say to somebody that wants to get into restoration? Would you tell them, you know, start a career in mechanics, explosion repair, something like that, or just dive right in? Well, here's the thing. Your average, like if you own your average restoration business, you need all of the above, mm -hmm. right? You need someone that can do interiors. You need someone that can do electrical. You need someone that can do body work and paint. You need someone that can do mechanical. So you need it all. So it's like, really, if you, like, if you're, if you have no, real skills to start with pick whichever one you enjoy the most as your starting base because mm -hmm. you can always learn more exactly right so pick one to start right if you're like i'm not a very artistic person me and body work don't get along <laughs> very well i don't have the touch for it right yeah. I, like i can't make a car smooth and shiny but i can pull wrenches like no other exactly. so for me it was pull wrenches because i'm i know i'm good at it i can learn it easy some people are better with their hands and better with doing the finesse work and body work and stuff so mm -hmm. if, you, if you know your you know, a little more artistic, get into the bodywork painting side of things, exactly. right? Exactly. And just like I say, you start with one skill, and once you can get that skill figured out, you can always learn more. Exactly. And you can always, I think the key thing too in the industry is that like, it's such a tight knit. Automotive is so tight knit. It is. Everyone has to know each other. I mean, every time, every day on the show, you guys are always like, oh, we got to go to XYZ to go get this part, you know, find one of your buddies that has it down the yeah. street. Well, you, ha you have to. That's have just, to. it's the way it works. Same thing we were saying before. It's, it's a very tight knit community, so making your connections, amplifying your skills and you know stepping up to the challenge really yeah. always yeah right so last thing yes is there any teasers that you can give us for the upcoming season you already said there's some pretty cool cars but can you let us in on a little bit just give us one sentence I'm, that would I'm, make us excited i'm not really allowed to say <laughs> i can say that there is some very cool builds that we did there was some um, no, no, there was some drama. There's been, there was some headaches. Some lime green in the picture. There's, yeah, there's some green. There's some bright yellow in the picture. Oh. There's some convertibles in the picture. There's a bit of everything this year. And it's exciting. It's very exciting, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. I know that a lot of people have been eagerly waiting for the next season, and uh, I'm excited to watch it. And thank you so much, Connor, for chatting with us today. Thank you for being at Motorama. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Of course.